All right, let's look at another example um, for forces on planar surfaces. Here we have a submerged scenario. Um, here we have rigid walls, these black lines here, and then here this green thing is actually one solid um, piece of gate. Um, so the water, this is all water, and its specific um, weight is 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed. Um, we have a hinge at A, so the gate actually opens up. It opens up like this, right? So when, when this opens, this little BC, it, it's, it's attached here at B. So it's just this one big welded piece. And the angle, um, ABC, is 60 degrees. And the length of the gate here is 2 meters. The length of the gate here is 1 meter. Um, the height is square root 3 meters. And the distance from the water to the hinge at A or the beginning of the gate is one meter. And the problem gives us um, that the width of the gate is two meters, so this is coming into the camera, it's two meters high, and the weight of this piece is 10 kilonewtons. And the problem asks us to find uh, the reaction at C. So the very first thing um, we want to note is the pressure distributions of the water on the gate. Now, down here we have a pressure at A, we have a pressure at B, and we have a pressure everywhere in between. So the pressure distribution um, from A to B looks something like something like this, right? Pressure increases as you go further down in depth. And then down here, B and C, well, every point along this line is at the same elevation, so the pressure distribution here is just linear, it's straight. It doesn't have this slope that we have up here at AB. And if we're looking at the gate, so if, let me draw this little eyeball. If this eye is looking at this gate, this is what that eyeball is going to see. It's going to see this um, 2 meter by 2 meter gate, okay? And, and and that that's what the eyeball sees. So it's going to be 2 meters in, in um, length or height, I guess, and 2 meters wide or into the camera, right? So the very first thing you want to do is draw a free body diagram um, of the of the gate itself. So I'm going to draw that. Uh, you can draw it here. Let's draw it here. We have this this gate, right? And at A we have a hinge or a pin. And you know a pin connection um, has a reaction A Y A X, right? Because it's the hinge at A. And then we have <coughs> Uh, reaction at C. So the water is pushing down, the gate's pushing against this rigid wall, and the rigid wall is pushing back. So we have we have a reaction here at C. And we also have a weight of 10 kilonewtons, and that acts at the center of this, um, well it would act on the center of mass of this body of mass. Um, since we're not going to worry about, um, well, Let's just say the center of mass is somewhere down this line. So the weight acts down this way. So it's 10 kilonewtons down. So if this was 1 meter, it would act at 0.5 meters from this point. <clears throat> now, this little angle that's created, this is our angle beta. We'll call it 30 degrees. This is 60 degrees. So, we're, so you see it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. And then, the pressure distribution here. Remember, we can replace this pressure distribution with a force and couple at the centroid of that surface. So, we'll, we'll do that. We'll call this FP1, force pressure of 1. And then a couple, or a moment, I guess, uh, we'll just call it CP. There, and it's acting at the centroid of this 
surface, not the centroid of the pressure distribution. Now at the bottom, we just have a pressure. I mean, we have a pressure, but it's linear, so we don't really have a couple. We just have a force called FP2. So let's, let's try to figure out some of these. FP1, let's start with FP1. FP1, what does that equal? Well, you know force is equal to pressure at the centroid of the shape times the area of the shape. And to find the pressure, we multiply um, the height and the specific weight to find the pressure. So it's 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed times the height to the uh, centroid of this, this shape from A to B. So the height would be 1 meter, and then the height here is square root 3, so it would be 1 meter plus square root 3 over 2, right, because this is the centroid, so square root 3 over 2, so 1 plus square root 3 divided by 2 from the free surface up here at the water. And the area, well, look at the eyeball. The eyeball is looking at this gate here, and it's going to look at this area, so it's a 2 meter by 2 meter, which is 4 meters squared. Oops, 4 meters squared. And we find out that the pressure at 1, or FP1, is 73.15 kilonewtons. Okay? Now find FP2. Again, that's pressure at the centroid of this shape times the area at 2. And that's equal to the 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed times 1 plus square root 3, right? Because it's 1 meter plus the square root 3 meters to get to this point. And then the area, this is 1 meter, and the width is 2 meters, so it's 1 times 2, which is 2 meters squared. And we get about um, 53.55 kilonewtons. Okay, that's FP2. How about CP? How about this couple right here? Well, you know, we know that our little formula is the specific weight times Ix times cosine beta. And the specific weight is 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed. And then Ix would be our 112 base times height cubed. So our base, in this case, would be 2. And our height would be 2. Right? So 112 times base times 2 cubed. And that's our, that's our Ix. And cosine beta. Okay, well we said this was beta. And we know cosine of beta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's square root 3 over 2. That's cosine of beta. We get about 11.32 um, um, kilonewton meter, right? And and that's kind of our moment. That's our that's our couple here at one. Um, <clears throat> now we can use this, this, and this to find the reaction at C because we know FP2. We know the 10 kilonewtons. We know CP, we know FP1, we don't know AX or AY, but if we took the moment about A, we wouldn't need those anyway. So let's do that. Let's let's find the moment about A is equal to zero, and I'll say this way is positive. And so our FP1 from A. Remember, this length is 2 meters, so 2 FP1, since this is perpendicular, this from A is just 1 meter, right, because the length is 2 here, and it's acting at the centroid, and this is perpendicular. So we can say FP1 times 1 meter plus the CP, because that's a moment, too, um, plus 1 half times 10 kilonewtons, right, because 
um, this length is 1, and we're, we're trying to find the moment created by this 10 kilonewtons, and that's at the center of 1, so that's, that's a distance 1 half, about A, times 10, and then minus 1 half FP2, right, minus, this is creating a moment this way, it's rotating uh, clockwise, and clockwise is negative, right? So, 1 half FP2, and then minus square root 3 times the reaction at C. And that, that's, um, you know, minus, it's creating clockwise, and the height or the distance from A to C is square root 3 meters. We can set that equal to 0. Now, if we plug in FP1, which we know, we plug in CP, which we know, and we plug in FP2, which we know, we can find that C is about... 36.19 kilonewtons, and it's acting this way. And the reason I know it's acting that way is because we drew, we assumed that the reaction is going left, and when we when we calculated C, it turned out to be a positive answer. And a positive answer means our assumption here was right. So the reaction at C is pushing the gate this way, and that makes sense, right? Because this pressure here is pushing the gate this way. And at C, we need a force this way to make sure this doesn't, you know, break the little rigid wall there.